Hello and welcome back to the KR Daily Transmission. I'm back here with you. Um, hi, hey, <laughs> welcome back. Hi, Corey. Good. Hello, Marissa. Hi, Justine. <laughs> so lovely to be here with you. Um, I know that I'm going live a little bit later than usual. But uh, it is the holidays after all. And I was surprised by how busy I was yesterday. Um, it was really, I had a lot of fun. Um, I got to meet a lot of new people yesterday. That made my heart really happy. Um, and I also got to be with the horses. So <laughs> my cats kept, you know, watching me come in and out of the house. Like, where are you going again? It was really fun. And um, it's wonderful to be back here with you live today. Uh, Jennifer's writing in saying, oh, I'm so grateful to catch you live. I just finished at the gym. Yes, Jennifer. I love that you're making working out a part of your holiday schedule. Who else got a good work in, out in this week? I would love to celebrate you as well. <laughs> so how did it go? How was your Thanksgiving? How was practicing some of the things that we talked about this week? Um, communicating your boundaries with love, holding your own heart first, um, practicing self-love so that you can allow others to be in their own sovereign experience. Um, I'm curious, feel free to share in the chat um, any victories you'd like to celebrate, any questions that you have that came up yesterday is you may have been test driving um, some new relationship skills during the holidays and I'm happy to connect with you there live in the chat. I also wanted to read this comment that came in a while ago and I thought it was kind of the perfect conversation for today. I just have to uh, go back and do <laughs> Oh wow, Marissa is sharing that. She's swimming in the ocean every day, and it's been so purifying for her. I love that. That's the place to do it. The ocean is the way. All right, so. Oh, there's actually a really great question that came in. <laughs> That's a really good question that came in, actually, um, on from Wednesday's video. And Charlotte is writing in, and Charlotte asked, Dear Kaya, thank you so much for your sharings. What about when family members, uh, that if when there's family members that you wish to escape from, when you try to stand in your pillar and they keep on attacking you, is there a possibility to quit that relationship? So Charlotte, I want to respond to you there's a plane flying over me, so I hope that's not too loud. I want to respond to this question. Um, it's a question that I think does come up a lot for people on the holidays. Um, and if you are one of those people, feel free to share like that you're in resonance with this. So there are a certain people in our lives that are meant to be there for us to learn how to say no to them. There are certain family members, certain um, Extended family members, people that you come into contact with in communities over the course of your life, where your sole purpose in engaging with that person is not about a forever chapter. It's actually about you learning how to speak a boundary, hold to a boundary, and even walk away from a relationship that may be to toxic, abusive, um, that does not honor or respect you. Um, that's love too. You can always be loving somebody from a healthy distance. Of course, we always want to do our best to be just diplomatic with anyone who is maybe has very, very different opinions from us, but they're being respectful in that, you know, different perspective, different belief systems. But if someone's being abusive towards you, about how you deserve to be treated, uh, what you believe in, um, maybe they're making you feel uncomfortable in your body. Those are all signs that it's time to call it on that relationship and you have every right to do that. 
Um, and you don't even have to explain why you can tell that person, this isn't working for me. The way, the way your behavior impacts my life, it doesn't work for me. Very often they're going to want to hook you by trying to get you to combat them in your decision to walk away. And, um, don't, don't go into a tit for tat reason. Don't go into an argument about why you're walking away. If you know someone is truly toxic, all you have to say is this relationship does not work for me. Your behavior does not work for me. I'm available when you're ready to respect my boundaries. But until then, I'll be loving you from over here. And this is the end of that conversation. It's not always easy to take a stand at that level. But sometimes people come into our lives so that we can learn that we can take a stand um, in such a powerful way that we start to change the course of our life. Because if we are allowing for certain people to continually abuse us, it, it creates holes and pockets in your auric field, in your heart, where starts to it starts to attract more people treating you that way. So it's never the option is never to ignore it. it it's to face it and and to take a stand and to communicate how you feel and what, what works and doesn't work for you. Because when you do that, you become st stronger and it's a statement to the universe that you're ready for something higher in your life. You're, you're ready for more respectful, loving, fun, life affirming individuals and, you know, spiritual family that respects who you are and admires who you are and uplifts who you are we don't we don't have to settle for abusive relationships just because we share blood with someone um that is an old paradigm it's a it's a cultural expectation it's societal programming and part of the journey of sovereignty is learning how to identify when people um, are relentlessly crossing your boundaries that it's up to you to say no. It's up to you to say, that doesn't work for me. It's up to you to claim, put a stake in the ground of your life, put the sword in the ground and say, my life is sacred space. And I don't participate in relationships that are abusive to me. God bless you to prosper elsewhere. So um, I hope that's helpful to you, Charlotte, and to anyone who's listening live. If if there's something that resonates there for you, feel free to comment or in the video replay, feel free, feel free to comment there as well. Um, I wanted to also talk about this other comment that came in the other day. And this comment was from, it looks like, it's hard to tell. It's one of those names that's kind of a combination in a in a number. So I'm gonna say it's Tara. <laughs> and so Tara is writing in about the Mother Mary teachings that we've been posting. And so Mother uh, Tara is asking or she's sharing. I had an experience with Mother Mary my first time reading through the book. I had to I actually had to stop reading her chapter. And I just wept in her presence. For so long, I felt unworthy of such a love. And Mother Mary said to me, you have been denying your divinity for too long. I remind myself of her message every day. I was so moved by what Tara wrote in because, number one, it was just so poignant and beautiful and honest and authentic. But it really spoke to something that I find in, um, in the light worker community. And it's around unworthiness and what we are doing as a collective to break through um, the conditioned, internalized self punishment that we put ourselves through. for being the love and light of God in this world. 
And so what I've discovered is that many people who are sensitive light workers actually don't even believe that they're worthy of their own light. They're, they don't believe that they're worthy of the help and the guidance that they have from their spiritual, spiritual guides and support team, their angelic support team. And they often don't feel worthy of God or their higher self be a conscious awareness but the more light workers go through their spiritual awakening it's interesting for me to watch how they'll go through layers of recognizing how they have in themselves the love respect and worthiness that they are already worthy of and Another thing that's interest, interesting to me is that the presence of the Ascended Masters mentoring us, they, they have a creating our understanding of when accelerating our recognition of when we're dealing with worthiness issues. So this is a classic example where Tara was reading the Mother Mary chapter, and it activated an awareness that she's been struggling with unworthiness for quite some time. But in the presence of Mother Mary, not only was she able to recognize how unworthiness is impacting her life, she was able to recognize that Mother Mary was actually there to support her as a spiritual guide, as a loving mentor, dare I say, as a spiritual mother to help guide Tara back to the truth of her innate worthiness of her own divinity and her worthiness to have Mother Mary as a spiritual guide. What did she do when she, what did she say that she did when she read the Mother Mary chapter? She said, I wept. I took time to be still and to weep in the recognition and identification that I am worthy of Mother Mary's attention. I'm worthy of her guidance and I'm worthy of the divinity that already exists within me. That's that was Tara's experience simply by reading the Mother Mary chapter in the Sophia Code. When I read this, I thought to myself, oh my God, this beautiful soul is encapsulating for us the power of the journey that we are about to go on with Mother Mary for the next year. This journey that we're calling Mother Mary Speaks, which is part of the title of my next book in the Sophia Code series. And we're going to be going on a journey through every part of your heart chakra. I don't know if you're familiar with your heart chakra technology, but there's actually 12 vitries in your heart chakra. And each of these petals, a vitri is a petal in the lotus flower of your heart chakra. And each of these petals have different divine virtues that you can cultivate to live life from a truly open heart. You are living life with an open heart. Issues such as unworthiness no longer plague your life. In fact, you start to feel so worthy of the goodness that life is continually attempting to offer you, such as Mother Mary being one of your primary spiritual guides. You, when that happens and you're allowing life to flow in through your heart chakra, it lights your whole body up like a Christmas tree. And you start accepting the gifts that the universe is sending you in every area of your life. There's so much more that I'm going to share about these, um, you know, this journey to open every aspect of your heart chakra. But for today's message, I really want to make it clear that our journey with Mother Mary is going to up-level your sense of self-worth, your sense of your the power of a healthy self-esteem, and it's going to support you in becoming clearer and clearer in your boundaries um, because your open heart is going to continue to want to attract to you uh, the goodness of life, the good people in life, the wonderful opportunities that want to support you, anoint you, uplift you, co-create with you. But that's also going to require uh, a community surrounding you in the grace that it's okay to grieve, just as this beautiful soul Tara wept when she read the Mother Mary chapter. It's important to grieve the losses that have come from when our hearts are shut down and when 
really challenging circumstances arise, including just how badly we can feel about ourselves uh, from programmed belief systems that are, un it's unnecessary pain, it's unnecessary struggle. And we go through a lot when we, when we are unconsciously suffering. And so grieving the past is a part of embracing the present moment and building our future. I've been posting some tweets about that on Twitter. If you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, I'm getting back into it because I think it's so interesting what's happening on Twitter. It's the same handle, Kyra Official. Um, anyway, so this journey of opening our hearts with Mother Mary, worthy of discovering just how much Mother Mary is here to help you raise your self-esteem, um, level up in your self-confidence, and be able to you know, speak clear boundaries with loving firmness and grace for yourself in the process of discovering just how powerful you really are and that living life with an open heart is only going to cultivate your discernment um, in such unexpected ways. So feel free to reach out to my team angels. Um, if you'd like to learn more about our Mother Mary Speaks journey, it is on sale still until um, the end of the year. So we have empowerment plans that can help you say yes uh, to being in this program one self-loving step at a time. And I just want to thank you again for tuning in live this week with me. We got to be together several times, and that's just been so special for me. And feel free to share your comments and your feedback and any questions that you have for future YouTube lives. Because as you see from today, I love to read what you're sharing in the chat and in the video replay comments. So thank you so much. I love you all so much. Have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are and a wonderful weekend. Namaste.